All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are locked on Falcons, and I'm your host, Aaron Freeman. And today I am joined by Kenny G, aka Grits Blitz, on Twitter of Neptune Scouting. And today we're going to be diving deep into the Falcons draft plan strategy, as well as Kenny giving his thoughts on the Falcons offseason moves so far. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, guys, you know me, I'm Aaron Freeman, been covering the Falcons for many years, formerly at Falcfans.com, RIP, still going strong on Twitter, at Falcfans, and of course, the host of this preeminent Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, and part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family. And today's episode of Locked On Falcons is brought to you by Rock Auto, where you can find amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. And before we jump into our conversation today with Kenny G, aka Grit Splits of Neptune Scouting, I want to thank everyone that makes Locked On Falcons their first listen each and every day. Of course, Locked On Falcons, just like all the Locked On Sports Atlanta shows, are free and available on a variety of podcast platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Google, Spotify, as well as on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Falcons YouTube channel to get all the latest updates. So uh, I'm joined here by uh, Kenny G. Um, you know, not necessarily the saxophone player, but, uh, you know, guy that provides great insight into the um, Falcons stuff on Twitter and elsewhere, like Neptune Scouting, as well as other places. Uh, and he's going to be joining us to sort of get an outside perspective on, um, or I guess an inside perspective, but an outside of this podcast perspective, I could say. People are tired of my takes, is what I've learned over the last couple of weeks. And so we'll see what, you know, Kenny has to say and particularly Kenny you know you you the pressure's on you to you know to sing the praises of Terry Fontenot and and Ryan Pace Amen. on today's episode <laughs> so uh, I I cede the floor to you uh to tell us you know what are your thoughts so far on the Falcons offseason moves well first off I'm really happy to be here Aaron thanks for having me um so singing the praises of Fontenot and company I don't know um if I'm going to exactly do all that but uh <laughs> because the first word I'm going to use is sloppy <laughs> It's been, um, you know, I'm actually fairly content with where we're at right now, considering the circumstances around it, but it was kind of a sloppy path to get here, you know. Um, I'm content we're here because I've been pushing the rebuild agenda since um, pretty much since Dan Quinn was fired. So, you know, I'm kind of happy that we seem to have a direction that the team is heading in, but how they got here is what's a bit concerning to me, you know, because... Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we were hearing about a Matt Ryan restructure on the table. Days after that, we're hearing that the Atlanta Falcons are, according to Adam Schefter, quote unquote, a dark horse and the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. And that um, that heated up fairly quickly. And next thing you knew, it looked like the Falcons were the favorites to land Deshaun Watson. And then the Cleveland Browns came in with a fully guaranteed quarter billion dollar contract. And that's what it took to get this rebuild started. If you really look at it, you know, it took a quarter billion dollar contract from the Cleveland Browns. And the fall of that was trading Matt Ryan, not getting the maximum value you could have gotten for him. And now we're here with a barren down roster and we're, you know, back at the bottom. Now you got to build up from here. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's been a very convoluted path to, to get here. And, you know, this goes back to something I've talked about on the podcast where, you know, I think a lot of people, as as you sort of mentioned, are saying like, you know, we're at the point, we're at the result that we wanted, which is a, a full embracing of the rebuild. But the process to get here just yes. seems so convoluted, and and as you said, I think sloppy is a is a good way to describe it. Is there any sort of particular offseason move, free agent addition that the Falcons have made? You know, beyond the obvious of signing long snapper mm -hmm. Bo Brinkley on monday <laughs> um is there any move that really stands out to you as like this is the one move that I, I i do like even if it's maybe a little bit sloppy in in the overall picture yeah you know there's actually a couple of them i like and first off you told me five days ago that bo brinkley was going to sign within the month so <laughs> got to give you props there buddy i guess we're not getting that pit long snapper after all <laughs> but um you know on twitter i was i was a pretty big fan of the alden tate signing you know um 
I think that he can be a starting X for a season. I don't know how much we'll get out of him, but like, I like giving him the opportunity with that, you know, $1.12 million deal. I, I really like that move. I'm a fan of the Lorenzo Carter signing as well. He seemed to be coming on late last year. I know you spoke with somebody um, familiar with the Giants on that pretty recently, and she had good things to say. He had four sacks in his last five games, something along those lines. I don't know if those numbers are correct, but I think we signed him to a 3.5. I don't know if that number is correct either, but we signed him to a deal in that range, and um, I think he can bring a lot of upside as well. I'm actually a fan of the Damian Williams signing as well. I think that he can, you know, spell Cordero um, better than Mike could at certain times last year. I think he offers a little more juice in the backfield. Really, I'm a fan overall of signing young players to cheap prove-it deals and then being able to um, to reap the rewards of, you know, offering these guys snaps and um, the opportunity to prove themselves and regain some of their value. Okay. Yeah, you know, this offseason has been interesting to me because, like, when you look at some of the individual players that the Falcons have added, I like them. It's kind of similar to two years ago where when – I remember people asked me, like, what do you think about the Ty Gurley signing and the Hayden Hurst move and, and these things? So, like, I like those individual moves, but for me, like, it didn't necessarily really move the needle for, like, the team yeah. as a whole because at that point it was like, well, is Dirk Cutter going to be a good play caller? Because if the answer to that is no, then none of this really matters. And that's kind of the the feeling I kind of get with this offseason, not to say sort of the specifics on, like, play calling, but it just feels like, you know, you're, you're getting some nice pieces uh, sort of individual pieces, players that can contribute to your roster, but it's probably not going to really move the needle for the Falcons. But, you know, in the midst of a rebuild, you know, I yeah. think a lot of people would argue that you don't want these moves to really move the needle because, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure the tankers are finally happy that the Falcons are, are finally moving, maybe at least arguably in, in the direction uh, towards the top of the 2023 draft class. But, uh, before we talk about the 2023 draft class, we have to talk about the 2022 draft class and we'll continue today's lockdown Falcons getting uh, Kenny's thoughts on, you know, what sort of the strategy the Falcons should have. Should they be still embracing the best player available strategy or should they be a little bit more decisive attacking some of our needs? And we'll get into that as we continue today's lockdown Falcons podcast. But guys, I do want to plug before we get there, the lockdown sports Atlanta YouTube channel, as well as podcast that have just recently launched and you can find a variety of shows on that channel just search locked on sports atlanta on your favorite podcast platform and you can get hard-hitting shows like hard hitting with john chuckery a to z with mark zeno and atl day ones with jarvis davis and tanitra batiste you know all these people from their days at 680 to fan as well as 92 90 game and they're now here on the locked on uh podcast family and with the locked on sports atlanta podcast network so, guys, uh, as you're probably watching this or listening to this, the NCAA tournament is over and there's a new national champion as we're recording this. I don't know who that person is, but uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, sports are over uh, now that we're in the month of April. And in fact, sports are only gearing up. You got big sporting events like the Masters this week, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, UFC 273, and of course, the 2022 NFL draft where you can have some great props. And if you want to get in on some of those props, of course, the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info is, of course, Bet Online. Head to betonline.net. You can find podcasts, you can find the latest odds, contests, player props. Bet Online has it all. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So we're here with uh, Kenny G uh, of Neptune Scouting, and we're talking about the Falcons draft plans. And I guess I'll ask you the question Do you think the Falcons? should continue to stick with their professed best player available draft strategy? Or do you think it's now time to sort of pivot a little bit more towards, you know, some targeted focus on drafting needs? For example, I think most people look at, say, quarterback, edge rusher, and wide receiver as some of the team's more pressing needs uh, on both sides of the ball. But, you know, if they're sticking to the best player available strategy, is it foreseeable that, you know, we could see them, you know, waiting until day three to address some of those needs because maybe the best player on the board is a safety or an offensive mm -hmm. lineman or a tight end. I'm curious sort of where you feel like the balance should be with the Falcons moving forward in, in this year's draft. And I'm happy you said balance because that's exactly what they have to find. I'm personally a fan of the best player available approach, but I'd like them to mix in some positional value in there as well. As you just alluded to, you know, 
you look at this roster right now and you can make a case for BPA in a lot of different positions. You know, you could draft a, you could draft a player anywhere and they could, they'd be both BPA and perhaps fill a need, you know, so you can make that case anywhere. Um, but yeah, I'd like them to find a balance with positional value there as well, because you look at last year's draft and as far as like positional value goes, they really didn't look at it that way. They took um, a tight end, a safety, two interior linemen and an undersized nickel return man with five of their picks. So I think that, I think that they should go best player available and still stick to that because if a Kyle Hamilton is there at eight, you got to give some deep consideration to that. He can help out in a multitude of ways. If, um, if a quarterback is there at eight and that's not your guy, don't just take him because he's a quarterback. You know, I'd like them to do this thing the right way. I want, I want the quarterback to come organically. You know, I don't want it to feel forced. I don't want them to take a guy just because they don't have a guy. I feel like that's how mistakes are made. And those are the kind of mistakes that could cost Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot both their jobs. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people look at it where this decision at the quarterback position, whether that's a player selected this year or a player selected next year, um, you know, could be the deciding factor in their long-term fate here in Atlanta, and they have to sort of get that pick right. And so I'm curious, you know, you, you talked about how uh, you, you don't want to necessarily see this team forcing a pick there. How do you feel like the Falcons should look to address that position? I know there's a lot of still ongoing debate on whether or not the Falcons should try to get a quarterback in this year's draft or just wait to next year when there's a better draft class and, and ride it out with Marcus Mariota and Felipe Franks and Josh Rosen mm -hmm. this season. Where do you sort of fall on that? So – I'm not very high on this quarterback class, but there's still some value to be had just depending on where you select these guys. Um, looking at our first selection, number eight overall, I've said before, I could buy Malik Willis being that pick there just because of the upside. And you um, you touched on his upside and if it's actually that high on yesterday yesterday's episode. And you made some very compelling points, you know, like, the middle of the field concerns and the progressions are both real. You know, those are things he didn't show in film, especially the middle of the field, which is something Arthur Smith loves to do. So I don't, I'm not sure if he's the best fit for us there. It would take a lot of time and a lot of coaching to get the best out of him, which is actually something we can provide him this year. We can provide him a season of, uh, of uh, preparation, a se an, another year of seasoning, you know, because we don't have many expectations this year. So we could put Mariota out there and let him, you know, <laughs> take the lumps while Willis sits behind him and learns a little bit. Um, Kenny Pickett, I'm not very high on – I'm not high on any of these guys, as I've said multiple times. But Kenny Pickett, I wouldn't like him at A. I think that um, we'd be a very poor fit for him just because I don't like the way he deals with pressure. I think he's a bit scarred from the past lines that uh, University of Pittsburgh put in front of him. Mm -hmm. And I think that coming to Atlanta, those um, – those lines wouldn't help him out at all. So. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But then you look to day two of the draft, and there is some value there. A lot of people smarter than me are very high on Desmond Ritter. So him at pick 43, there could be a ton of value there. Um, Sam Howell, Matt Corral, Carson Strong, one of those guys on day two is within, you know, is a real possibility. And I do actually expect them to address the quarterback position during the draft at some point. I don't necessarily think it'll be in the first round. I'm not even sure if it'll be in the second round, but I I think that quarterback is a need, and I think taking one day two could both give them somebody to develop, and it also you know wouldn't it wouldn't force them to pivot off of um, a higher caliber prospect if they're picking in the top three or five next year. Now, uh, as we continue today's episode, I, I do want to pick your brain on a couple of prospects that you know you're really high on, or maybe some of your favorite guys that you would love to see land in Atlanta. But before we get there, I do want to ask you a little bit of a, a curveball question. You know, I guess it was whenever some last week someone had a mock that had uh, the Falcons trading up for Kenny Pickett in the draft, and I, you know, I imagine very few people are of the mindset of the Falcons trading up in the draft, but. I just, you know, not necessarily advocating for that. But if there was a player in this draft class that you would think, you know, this is the one player that I would consider trading up for. Is there somebody in this draft class that is worth that to you in Atlanta? I got to be honest with you, Aaron. There's not. I don't see anybody in this draft class where I'd be willing to part with significant future capital to make a move for them. Nobody's going to move the needle for this team this year that far. I just... 
And I'm lower on this draft class as a whole than other people are. I think that there's a lack of blue chip talent up top. And with that lack of blue chip talent, I see very few players who I'd like to move up for. If they're going to get a quarterback, I could see them. You know, the Giants have two top seven picks. They're probably more than willing to move down. If we wanted to jump to five to get a guy, sure. I I wouldn't okay that, though. (laughs) I'd rather, as I said, let it come organically. Let the guy come to you. But overall, I mean, Aiden Hutchinson, if he were to somehow slide, maybe you jump another team for him or something like that. Uh, You could – I like Evan Neal and Nikki Aquanu a lot. I really want the Falcons to get a very talented prospect on that line. But, no, overall, I don't think there's any player I would feel comfortable with trading up for. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was I was mostly just, you know, I figured that would be your answer. But I was wondering, like, did you harbor, uh, you know, good enough feelings for someone like Aquanu or Neal or, or Aiden Hutchinson, or I think most people sort of consider to be the closest players if you're looking for a blue chip talent in this draft, in addition to Kyle Hamilton. I know a lot of mm-hmm. people consider him to, to be on that level as well. So I was just curious to see your thoughts on that. And I'm also curious to get your thoughts on some other players that you would love the Falcons to nab. Maybe you've already talked about a couple of them and we'll get into that as we continue today's Locked On Falcons. But before we get there, guys, I do want to let you know about the Locked On NFL podcast, which you can find on all the same podcast platforms uh, that you can find Locked On Falcons. And of course, why not check out the Locked On NFL podcast to get the latest on the big trade between the Saints and Eagles and sort of how that shakes out in addition to checking out Locked On Eagles and Locked On Saints to see how that impacts them. Are the Saints potentially looking to move up for a quarterback or are they just trying to get two first round picks to get a left tackle and a wide receiver? Of course, Locked On NFL as well as Locked On Saints will have you covered on all that sort of stuff. And you, of course, you can find them on all the same podcast platforms you can find locked on falcons and guys i want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by rock auto with ever increasing numbers of makes and models it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need while wait while the person behind the counter orders parts on their computer when you already have a computer with access to rockauto.com in your pocket or at home save time and money when using rock auto instead of spending twice as much for the same parts at a chain store or car dealership rock auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years with reliable low prices for every customer they have everything you need from brake parts tail lamps motor oil even new carpet just go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and then write locked on any how did you hear about us box so that they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com so, guys, I want to thank you all for making Lockdown Falcons your first listen each and every day. And, of course, Lockdown Falcons is now part of the Lockdown Sports Atlanta podcast family. And we're here with Kenny G of Grit Splits of Neptune Scouting. And just, you know, when I get Falcons folks on the podcast just to pick their brain on a couple of, of names that they really like and prospects that at least on draft nights, you know, moving forward at the end of the month, we might be like, oh, that's that's one of Kenny's guys or that's one of this person's guys. So, you know, who, who are some of your guys that you would really love to see in a Falcons uniform this year? So a lot of the prospects that I'm really targeting come in day two of the draft. And before I get to the prospects specifically, let me just say, that they got a nail day two this year, more so than any other. They have to get immediate contributors day two. I don't care if there are low expectations for the team. It's t- you got how many four, p- five picks in the top eighty-two this year. You have got to nail these picks. So some of these players that I'm looking at on day two specifically, my first one being Christian Watson, and he may sneak into the late first, especially now that Green Bay and Kansas City each possess two first rounders respectively, and they each have needs at wide receiver. So I don't know if we'll necessarily get there, but Christian Watson is a guy that I think makes a lot of sense in this offense. He's 6'4". He brings size. He's an explosive player, ran a 4'3", 4'40", dash. He can play both the X receiver role as well as provide versatility in the slot. He's shown big play ability downfield on, multi- mul- on multiple levels and also with the ball in his hands. Uh, North Dakota State gave him plenty of jet sweeps, even some pitches from the backfield, reminiscent of Cordero. And he also was the best offensive player at the Senior Bowl, specifically working with the receiver group that the Atlanta Falcons staff themselves were spotted, keeping a very close eye on. So I think that he would be a great fit for us. Um, There's a few other receivers you could fit in there. It's a very good class. But him specifically, that's a guy I would really love to target. Um, I also think, and I might might get some pushback on this, not necessarily from you, but from some other people, 
I think Jeremy Rucker, the tight end out of Ohio State, is somebody I would love to see the Falcons go after. Believe it or not, tight end is actually still a need for us right now, the way I look at it. Arthur Smith loves to run 12 personnel, and Jeremy Rucker could play that traditional Y tight end role seamlessly. His blocking ability is a plus. He's 6'5", 250, great frame, and he moves well and he catches well. He's He's not a nobody in the receiving game. He offers a lot in that regard. And if it wasn't for the plethora of playmakers he was surrounded by, I believe he would have showcased a lot more of that receiving ability in his college career. Moving to the other side of the ball, Arnold Ebicady, the defensive end out of Penn State. I think he's a guy that would add a lot of juice to the pass rush room. I think that he um, he fits a lot of the thresholds that, you know, we have a limited sample size on what, Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot and Kyle Smith, who I think is the underrated man in the, in the draft room. They, it's hard to get a feel on what they have, you know, but um, one of the only thresholds I could find that they uh, need their players to meet is they like their edge rushers and defensive linemen to have a 35 inch wingspan. Ebicady falls a little bit short of that, but I still think he's a player that we could draft and he would add a lot. He can rush out of a two point stance, can rush out of a three point stance, violent with his hands has a mean cross chop. I think that he would, you know, add a legit pass rusher next to Lorenzo Carter or Ogan Deji or whoever we end up we end up with in that position. And then there's a few other prospects that I think that we can take advantage of their stock falling. Because there are low expectations for this team this year. I mean, Vegas has us at a four and a half or a five and a half win total right now. So I hate to say low expectations, but I mean the reality is the roster is compromised. So let's take advantage of that. Let's take some of this talent that's falling a bit due to injury. I don't know where Jameson Williams is going to go in the draft. I wouldn't feel comfortable taking him at eight at all, but I think that a player with that kind of skill set would help out the entire offense a lot. And I think specifically he would help out Kyle Pitts because I like to look at Kansas City and the way Tyreek Hill helped open things up for Travis Kelsey, as well as the Las Vegas Raiders. And when Henry Ruggs was playing at his best, he opened things up for Darren Waller as well. So I think a field structure with that ability could make the entire offense better. As said, I don't feel comfortable taking him at eight, but that's a player I would really enjoy this team getting. I don't know if it's realistic or not, but that's a guy that would help a lot. And I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but one more guy also falling due to injury concerns is David Ajabo out of Michigan. He was a hot name at eight overall for Atlanta, and now who knows where he's going to go. The, Achilles, the torn Achilles is a very serious injury. But with modern medicine lately, you know, I believe he'll be able to make a full recovery. I mean, shoot, we just saw Cam Akers come recover in about half a year and play in the playoffs for the Rams from the same injury. So I think Ajabo is a guy that's falling. He's one of the highest upside pass rushers just due to his, due to his bend and athleticism. And he needed seasoning anyway. He wasn't a very good player against the run in Michigan. As a matter of fact, they took him off the field in some uh some rundowns, but I think that he could benefit from rehabbing with us, getting up to speed, putting on some weight, you know, refining his technique, and then coming full speed next offseason. So, yeah, those are those are a couple of the names I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, whether they go to us or not. Those are some guys that I'm big fans of. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that Friday morning once you've already raged against whatever the Falcons wind up doing at thir uh, Thursday <laughs> night uh, that completely, you know, throws you for a, a loop. Uh, and then, you know, Friday, like, OK, I don't know what the Falcons were doing in round one, but here, yep. here are the guys I'm hoping that they're going to get in, on day two of the draft and there, to make up for it. There's a uh, lot you can sell me on in round one. You know, I'm, I'll be able to make bed with whatever we do at eight overall, as long as day two, we nail that second and third round. There you go. That's how it works. That's how it works. You know, you're like, ah, I don't know about that first round pick, but yep. uh, day two, that's where we'll nail it. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll win them back. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens. Kenny, appreciate you joining me and, and sharing your insight into uh, some of these topics and, and giving some listeners some names, you know, to, to keep an eye on, particularly in that day two portion, because we spend so much energy talking about round one on this draft. So mm -hmm. let the people know sort of where they can hit you up uh, if they want to get further insight into this draft class, as well as all other things, Falcons. Yeah, guys, you can go ahead, follow my handle, Grits Blitz, right there. <laughs> follow me at Grits Blitz on Twitter. Follow me over at Neptune Scouting. Me and a couple other guys got some good stuff going on over there. And also you can catch me and some of my, catch me over at the Falcons Nest Podcast. We do some live shows throughout the week. So that's where you can find me. Thanks for having me on, Aaron. No problem, man. Been wanting to have you on for a while. Um forget what tweet you had a couple of months ago that I was like, Oh, this is this is a great tweet. Um, and I'm like, this is uh 
this is why Kitty's good, but uh, I can't remember. <laughs> well, what did it, it have to do with the sack total? Maybe, maybe I can't remember what it was. It was it was a really great tweet, and I was like, yeah, this is this is this is better than some of the stuff I'd be tweeting out. You know, uh, no, uh, appreciate it, Kenny, and uh, look forward to you know talking with you after the draft to sort of see you know what you think about the actual class that the Falcons wind up getting, and if they wind up nailing those day two selections as you hope to see. So really appreciate you coming on today. Looking forward to it. Thank you. And for your, all of you guys checking out, of course, check out Kenny on Grid Splits. And, of course, check out Locked On Falcons as well as the other Locked On Sports Atlanta shows, A to Z, Hard Hitting, ATL Day Ones, Locked On Hawks, Locked On Bulldogs, Locked On Braves. And, of course, you can find those all on the same podcast platforms that you can find, of course, the daily show devoted to the 2022 NFL Draft and all things draft. That is, of course, the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. Uh, and, of course, that's free and available on all the same podcast platforms. You can find all those other shows, including Apple Odyssey, Google, and Spotify. Appreciate it, guys. Till then.